Hello, and welcome to the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra Spring Into Music Gala. I am Terrell Stafford, and I'm thrilled to be your host this evening. Tonight, we celebrate the 30th anniversary of the NJSO Youth Orchestras and their legacy of providing access to quality music education for young musicians and empowering the next generation of leaders. This foundational program has been a critical musical community for thousands of young musicians and their families over the last three decades, inspiring them to expand what they think is possible for their lives and their futures. Whether they've gone on to careers in education, engineering, law, or music, the alumni of the NJSO Youth Orchestras have gone on to make their marks as leaders and citizens. I have the great pleasure of knowing the Youth Orchestra's Artistic Director, Jose Luis Dominguez, as a colleague at Temple University, and I have worked with him on an exciting new project that has the NJSO Youth Orchestra students composing new music. These young players are so creative and have drawn inspiration from many genres. Tonight, you will hear the world premiere of the first of these pieces. The COVID-19 pandemic has made us reimagine our day-to-day -day work with the youth orchestras. From virtual private coaching to virtual showcases, our students, coaches, and teaching artists rose to the challenge of shifting this unique musical community to a completely virtual format. Everyone who makes up the NJSO Youth Orchestra's family should be exceedingly proud of the resilience discipline, compassion, and creativity they all have demonstrated. Tonight, we will also celebrate the impact of the NJSO in communities throughout New Jersey, from string duo performances at hospital bedsides to massive free summer concerts, from the powerful stories of the youth orchestra students to the heartwarming accounts of the NJSO service to New Jerseyans of all ages and walks of life. This is sure to be a special night of pure joy and inspiration. And now I'm pleased to introduce to you the 2020 winner of the NJSO Youth Orchestra Henry Lewis Concerto Competition. She won the competition in January last year and has waited ever since for the chance to play it live. Please welcome flautist Hannah Lee performing Mozart's Flute Concerto No. 1 in G Major with the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. When I prepare for uh, performances like this, I feel like it really just is about experience. When I'm performing, I actually try not to think too much. So I tend to keep my head empty, just sort of, I guess, give myself more encouragement, telling myself, like, you can do this. You did it perfectly fine. You practiced it, like, memorized perfectly, like, this whole entire time. Just show them what you have. So, yeah. <laughs>
Hey, this is Mayor Raj J. Baraka, and I'm excited to join you to celebrate 30 years of NJSO's youth orchestras. It is uh, an exciting time to begin figuring out how we move forward out of this pandemic. Uh, the pandemic has ended all live shows and made it very difficult for NJSO, but also for the people of this town, uh, whether it's the performances in Branchbrook Park, the educational opportunities for young people, performing in hospitals, or all of the things that the symphony orchestra does for the city of Newark. We all suffered uh, because of the pandemic and us not being able to enjoy the incredible music of NJSO. I'm excited to join you uh, this evening uh, and begin to meet with you and other folks who love and appreciate music uh, and NJSO and the youth orchestras. I, uh, as the mayor of the city, uh, want to say congratulations to you. Continue up, continue the great work that you're doing, uh, not just for the state of New Jersey, but for the incredible city of Newark. Godspeed to everyone. Looking forward to incredible years after this pandemic is finally done. Radon's involvement with the New Jersey Symphony's youth program, orchestra program, has been so rewarding for him and for us. There, you were. You were immediately welcomed. There were parent meetings. Um, the, the children are always um, very supported. And it feels like a second family. Steven started playing uh, violin. I love um, classical music. Uh, now it's classic music. It's my favorite. We talk about classic music uh, 
uh, all the time and he teach me how to appreciate the classical music because he has been here for eight years he make a uh, a, a lot of friends. He love to come every Saturday morning and for three hours uh, rehearsal is because for him it's a, like a enjoy moment of the week. To learn so much in in his instrument and for the for his love of music, it helps us as a family. We have to get involved with this program. It helps him in his social life, and it connects me my generation to his generation also. The youth orchestras have been a tremendous opportunity for my son, Michael. He has grown in confidence in his playing. He has benefited greatly from making great music with students from all over the state. He has learned so much from the dedicated coaches and now he's, he's a part of his school orchestra and has been able to join the Honors Orchestra at his school because of the experience that he has gained through the youth orchestra programs. The kids talk to each other and talk about the high school, middle school life and talk about the music. I have made friends um, throughout different sections, not just you know the violin section. Uh, my friends that are, that are flutists, that are bassists, that are cellists. Um, and you know we stay in touch once in a while, and and you know when, whenever we're all back home in New Jersey, we, we like to meet up and uh, maybe play for a little bit, or you know just just uh, hang out. Some of my closest friends to this day were members of New Jersey Symphony uh, Youth Orchestras back when I went, and I was able to to make great friends that that I think will last a lifetime. That perspective that this organization gives me gives me a larger motivation to make a difference now with these students because I see that they have the same fire. I see that they have the same want to be able to express themselves on the instruments and that's what I'm going to try to do for them. 30 years ago, the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra founded a program to bring tuition-free music education to young people in and around Newark. Serving the students has been the most meaningful thing in my life. We've given everything we have to create a delightful learning experience of lasting value to the students. Starting with just 25 students, the NJSO Youth Orchestras are now a musical home to more than 200 young musicians, from fourth grade beginners through advanced high schoolers. This year, we commemorate three decades of helping young people develop their creative possibilities. Under the inspirational leadership of Artistic Director Jose Luis Dominguez, our students learn to harness the power of their imaginations. From our beginnings in the second floor theater at Newark Symphony Hall, to performing at the world famous Carnegie Hall, our concerts and programs are as diverse as the youth that participate in them, and we are proud of the relationships that we've built throughout the years. When reflecting on the program's history, we are encouraged by the young artists who have gone through the program and carried with them the life lessons taught by our coaches. I have several kids who are in the academy orchestra, the upper level orchestra, who were in my string ensemble way back when they were in fifth grade or sixth grade. So it's really fun, first of all, to see how tall they are now, but also just how accomplished they are. Um, and we've had many kids move up gradually from string ensemble to chamber orchestra and then chamber orchestra to academy and now they're um, leaders in the academy orchestra and mentors to younger children as well. Some students have gone on to become professional musicians and music educators and others have taken those skills and applied them to successful careers in a wide spectrum of industries. A lot of my orchestra classmates from arts high school were part of that orchestra with me and we still play regularly and just hang out. Some who are doing music, some who are doing other things, but still, you know, like to play. And uh, I think the symphony has a lot to uh, take credit for in that regard. We would be nothing without the support of our amazing coaches. More than 100 musician coaches have shared their talents with the youth orchestra students over the years, and we cannot thank them enough for their wisdom and time. Every Saturday, these educators train our young musicians to hone their skills and realize their goals. 
at the beginning of the pandemic, we all reacted, I mean, in, in great creative ways, video, the grid, everybody recording from home. I thought that we might do something different that will kind of get that creative muscle back. So I thought, what a great opportunity this will be to hear their voices. Everybody has a voice that can be expressed in any art form. You just need help when you don't have the training. So I thought, that, okay, let's just create an, a list of new music that comes from them. So I'm so happy that you have never composed before because it's going to feel it as a collective exercise. But I will make sure that when you, when you listen to your final product, you will hear yourself. We'd like to extend a special thank you to U.S. Senator Cory Booker for his support. Senator Booker wrote a letter earlier this month expressing that, even in these difficult times, the NJSO has adapted and worked tirelessly to serve its students by providing them with the support they need to achieve success. As far as the NJSO youth orchestras have come, we can still go so much further. The progress we have made from our humble beginnings proves that there's no limit to the impact we can have. Who knows what the future has in store? Thank you to the donors who help make it possible to pass on a love of classical music to young people and teach them the value of mentorship, collaboration, leadership, and most importantly, friendship. That concludes the first act of our gala program. We'd like to thank every one of our coaches that have been part of the NJSO Youth Orchestra since 1990. The NJSO is so fortunate to have had more than 100 musicians share their time and talent with our students over the years. We are now going to take a brief intermission accompanied by a cocktail demonstration by one of our sponsors, All Points West Distillery. While you're enjoying a drink, you can also check out our online auction. The link is below and also in the chat. Bidding closes at 9 p.m., so get your bids in while you still can. NJSO depends on your generosity of donors like you to make all of the programs that you are seeing tonight possible. So from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you for your support. Hi, my name is David Blinn. I am a violist with the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra, and I have the lucky privilege of welcoming you to the Spring Into Music Cocktail Hour. I'm here at the All Points West Distillery in Newark, and I get to try two cocktails. I'm Gil Speyer. I'm the founder and head distiller at All Points West Distillery in Newark, New Jersey. We're a small craft distillery that's been open for four years in Newark's Ironbound. We're partnering with the New Jersey Symphony for their Spring Into Music event, and we're being joined by David Blinn, who's gonna to get to taste the cocktails for you. So Tom Collins is a classic cocktail from the late 19th century. It's generally made with gin, lemon, sugar, and soda water. And we're gonna be making a slightly spicier variation using our pink pepper gin, and we're gonna be making a non-alcoholic variation that replaces the herbaceous quality of gin with cucumber. You're gonna want some ice in a glass. These are Collins glasses. I think it's important to have fresh ice in the glass because you don't want your drink to get diluted too fast. And you're gonna want some ice to shake the drink. You can use any type of cocktail shaker. I'm using a pint glass and a cocktail tin. And you're gonna want something to measure the alcohol. So I'm gonna be measuring in an ounce and a half of the pink pepper gin. Measuring in three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. And we're gonna have some fresh lemon juice. The fresher the juice, the better the cocktail. Also, we'll save a little wheel for garnish. An ounce and a half of lemon juice. Gonna add ice to the tin. Strain this over the fresh ice. And top with some soda water.
Pink Pepper Tom Collins. The second variation is gonna be our Cucumber Collins. We're gonna take half a cucumber and we're going to blend it. I'm gonna use that puree uh, to replace the gin in the drink. So I'm going to cut the cucumber in half. Once again, the fresher the ingredients, the better. I'm gonna take one stripe of cucumber for a garnish. And let's get to blending. We're gonna do about an ounce and a half of lemon juice. And about three ounces of cucumber puree. We're gonna shake that with ice. And pour over fresh ice. And top with some soda water. Here you have it, the Pink Pepper Tom Collins and the Cucumber Collins. So the first cocktail is the Cucumber Collins. We replace the herbaceous character of the gin with pureed cucumber. Well, I love cucumber, it's so refreshing. Oh, that's good. I like the cucumber flavor. You get a little sweetness and then you get that little uh, tartness delicious and very refreshing, especially for a summer gin. Now the second gin, you have a pink pepper Tom Collins. Our pink pepper gin takes our regular cat house gin and post distillation infuses two additional botanicals, pink pepper and hibiscus. And this adds a nice spicy brightness, which makes this Tom Collins especially refreshing. Cool, excellent. Can't wait to try this. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I take it to go, please? This is really good. I will take a bottle home with me today. When the pandemic forced the cancellation of in-person concerts, many within the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra community turned to us asking how they could continue to experience the NJSO. Despite the obvious obstacles, the NJSO created virtual, at-home musical experiences that brought our musicians into the homes of our patrons and found new audiences across the globe. In the past year, the NJSO has reached more than 10 million people through our social media platforms, website, and emails. One of our most vital community efforts is the NJSO Music and Wellness Program, this program promotes healing through music for patients, staff, and caregivers through customized chamber concerts. These offerings provide social, emotional, and therapeutic benefits in healthcare facilities, including nursing homes, rehabilitation centers, and hospices. While in years past our musicians have visited healthcare communities in person, this year we had to reimagine our approach to engaging our communities. We focused on bringing therapeutic benefits to individuals who have sacrificed so much for our well-being. Essential workers received free virtual lessons from NJSO musicians through a special initiative with our partner Hackensack Meridian Health. Through these lessons, they managed to find time to make music for themselves. One of our most meaningful music and wellness virtual performances was our annual collaboration with Parkinson's, Sings, which gives those living with Parkinson's disease an opportunity to lean into their creative sides as vocalists. And thanks to our healthcare sponsors, we were able to continue our commitment to hospital palliative care by sharing our NJSO at-home video series to be aired on hospitals' internal TV channels. Our musicians have made wonderful memories with New Jersey residents, young and old, through shared musical experiences. We look forward to performing in community spaces across the state in person soon. We have served our communities safely this year through free online programs. NJSO concert films pair world-class performances with stunning imagery of the people and cityscapes of New Jersey 
while NJSO at Home spotlights intimate at-home performances, instrument demonstrations, and educational videos. This year, we have presented innovative programs with fellow arts organizations, like a social justice focus program with Newark-based Trilogy, an opera company, and a Broadway series with the Paper Mill Playhouse. And this summer, our partnerships will expand to include collaborations with the Newark Museum of Art and the Mayo Performing Arts Center to bring live performances in socially distanced settings. This last year has brought us closer together than ever before. You've welcomed us into your homes and made us a part of your family in ways we had not thought possible. We look forward to when we can welcome you back into our home and experience the power of live music together. Hello, I'm Phil Natchez, gala co-chair and a trustee of the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. I'm here to introduce our 2021 Spring Into Music honoree and one of our NJSO benefactors, BD. Founded as Becton Dickinson and Company in 1897, they are committed to helping healthcare providers to deliver the best possible patient care, which includes meeting the critical need for vaccinations. Through our partnership with BD, we've been able to provide the best training for our youth orchestras, coaches, and staff. Their generous support of the NJSO has spanned 60 years, and their Henry Becton Scholarship Fund helps us to see through our promise to the students of the youth orchestras in 2021 and beyond. Accepting the honor on behalf of BD is Alberto Moss, Executive Vice President and President of the Medical Segment. I've had the pleasure of serving on the NJSO board with Alberto during his recent tenure as a trustee and I'm thrilled to welcome him tonight. Thank you, Phil. I'm privileged to accept this honor on behalf of BD and be here tonight to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the NGSO Youth Orchestra with all of you. The performances so far have been outstanding and I'd like to take a moment to recognize and thank all the incredible musicians for sharing their talents and passions, as well as my fellow honorees, Martin Anderson, and Bob Wagner for their contributions to the Youth Orchestra. At BD, we're passionate about our purpose, advancing the world of health. And that applies not just to the way we do business, but also to the ways we can make a difference and give back to the communities where we live and work. BD's relationship with NGSO can be traced back nearly 60 years to the late Henry B. Becton, who was the son of BD's founder, Maxwell Becton, and an important leader at our company for more than 50 years. Hank's great love of music and his strong ties to the philanthropic community in New Jersey are evident in BD's ongoing commitment to the NGSO. Through the Henry Becton Scholarship Fund, we are pleased to support NGSO's mission of bridging the gap between cultural and economic diversity through the power of music with programs like the Youth Orchestra. Music enriches the lives of so many, and it's truly inspiring to see these students complete a musical education hone their talents, and develop critical life skills that will help prepare them for successful futures. The NGSO's efforts to bring this art form into our neighborhoods to share its positive impact with students are very important to the health of this community. Personally, I have also greatly enjoyed serving on the NGSO board for a couple of years and seeing firsthand the difference these programs make in the community. Once again, we at BD are honored to receive this recognition as we continue our commitment to the NGSO. Congratulations to all tonight's performance and enjoy the rest of this beautiful gala. Thank you.
hear it for the Fields Ensemble. What a performance! Hello, I am Michelle Merchant, Gala Co-Chair and member of the NJSO Education and Community Engagement Committee. I'm also a longtime Youth Orchestra's parent, and I am happy to be here with all of you, albeit behind a computer instead of at a dinner table. When I was asked to be a part of this year's Spring Gala, we talked about how we could show off and celebrate our youth orchestras virtually. Fortunately, the musician coaches at the symphony have continued their tradition of excellence and have left us with no shortage of accomplishments to share. Tonight, we recognize the contributions of all of the musician coaches who make this program possible and honor two individuals who have been pillars of our youth orchestra's program since the beginning, Martin Anderson and Bob Wagner. Martin Anderson has played viola with the NJSO since 1979 and is a dedicated teacher and Suzuki specialist who has nurtured many violin and viola players. As a founding coach for the youth orchestras, he has helped refine and build the program over its 30-year history. With a passion for chamber music, Martin has coached the Ann Lieberson Ensemble, which is a chamber ensemble of our most advanced students since it was created in 2016. Principal bassoonist Bob Wagner has also been a member of NJSO since 1979. In addition to serving as a trustee of the orchestra, Bob is a board member for the League of American Orchestras and Art Pride New Jersey. He's a devoted teacher to bassoon students in his private studio and holds a professorship at Princeton University. A founding coach for the youth orchestras, Bob has been a champion of building the program and recruiting new players. Please join me in welcoming my friends and colleagues, Martin Anderson and Bob Wagner. My name is Martin Anderson. I've played the viola as a member of the NJSO since 1979. I'm Bob Wagner, I'm principal bassoonist of the New Jersey Symphony. Uh, I've been coaching at the Youth Symphony since the very first day we began, uh, over 30 years ago. My job today is to help celebrate the 30th anniversary of the NJSO Youth Orchestra program as a founding coach who was there for the very first rehearsal of the Greater Newark Youth Orchestra and never looked back until today. Judy Natchison, who was our Director of Education, asked me if I would be interested in working with some of the young students and maybe even forming an orchestra. That vision was one of serving the underserved Susan Stucker, who was then, I, I think, Judy's assistant, was put in charge of this, and she did a great job of just get, getting us organized and started. Greater Newark Youth Orchestra, or Guineo, started out with about 30 students, that number growing steadily over the years. I think uh, a great development in that we're now mixing kids from all these different communities together, bringing them together for a common purpose, which is what music can do. It has been a real joy for me to coach chamber music students. It's been an amazingly rewarding experience to watch their development, watch their ever increasing desire to learn, watching their curiosity, watching them find answers, watching them find new questions to raise. Thank you to my fellow coaches who adapting teaching methods and keeping morale up as we attempt to keep the mission going, work hard every day to effectively teach our students remotely. It, of course, has been a great honor to be a part of this, um, but you know, it's an honor I share with so many of my colleagues who have had the opportunity to work with so many of the students over all these years. It is possible for a musical experience to be greater than the sum of its parts that as a result, music can arise even to the level of the transcendent. These and other such aspirations are, to me, what I've cherished most in my time with the NJSO Youth Orchestra Program. 
thank you so much for the honor and for honoring us, but you really honor all of the musicians who have been involved in this program for all these years. May it continue to thrive for many years to come. Jose Luis Dominguez is a brilliant composer, and he had a wonderful idea for this year, since we were going to be virtual in our, in our Saturday meetings, to have a creative composition program. The general idea of the project, it was in response to our inability to get together from the beginning of the pandemic towards that summer, before we started again after the break, I thought, we are going to write our own music. All of the students met with different coaches and composed pieces that Jose Luis arranged and orchestrated, and uh, it's just been really inspiring. It's an insane amount of groups writing little snippets of melodies coached by different coaches, you know, different teachers. I just had four of over 20 composing groups. The Enchanted Forest was composed by one of my composition groups. They named themselves the Chromatic Creators. They were willing to feed off of each other's ideas and improvise, and I didn't have to work that hard to get them to do that. So what Kathleen did is that somehow every student's idea linked with the next student's idea. So in a way, the second student would be continuing the first student's, but with his own notes. They were relating to each other, and it was such a beautiful thing to see. So that was brilliant, because I, I kept getting these emails with the handwritten you know, ideas of the sessions, or sometimes recordings, um, that I would listen and transcribe myself. The Enchanted Forest uh, starts off with three notes that were written by Natalie. And the, the very first class, I said, okay, let's, let's start. Who's got, some, who's, who's got an idea they want to contribute? So Natalie picked up her violin and played three notes. And I wrote them down. And, and they had a particular kind of a rhythm to them. And I, I wrote that down. And then I said, would somebody like to try continuing that. And Ashita said, yeah, I'd like to try that. And she picked up her violin and she played the, uh, the rest of that phrase. And it kind of went on from there. Whenever I had a minute or two of an audio file finished or sort of finished, not mixed or anything, I would send it and they would get immediate feedback. So they would be inspired to what's next and what's next. And, and then I was able to say to the students, let's listen to this and what do you hear? is happening here and what what instrument is he has he uh, orchestrated this section for and they had their own story going on about a magic forest and turmoils and and darkness and light and every time Kathleen would write me or call me and share with me those terms and words that came out in the sessions that was gold for me so in March of 2021 my world as a youth orchestra coach intersected with my world as a flutist in the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. My two jobs were combined, and it was a very exciting um, and inspiring moment, I have to say, when I, when I was playing this, the, the music that my students had written with Jose Luis was conducting us, and I felt very proud of, of my students. Very proud of my orchestra, too, for having this whole project.
Congratulations to our student composers of the Chromatic Creators on that magical piece. Music like this makes me feel most connected to our community. Music created by the community creates a community. Youth programs like this can inspire young musicians to accomplish their dreams, and they empower our students to inspire the generations that follow. On behalf of the entire NJSO family, I'd like to thank you all for being with us tonight to celebrate 30 years of fostering young musicians' creativity. None of this work would be possible without the generous donations from our community, sponsors, and corporate partners. A very special thanks to m and Bank for sponsoring the Youth Orchestra's 30th anniversary season, and an extra special thanks to our honorees Martin Anderson, Bob Wagner, and Alberto Mas of BD. We'd also like to thank Mayor Ross Baraka and all of the speakers and performers who have participated this evening, as well as our gala co-chairs, Michelle Merchant and Phil Neches. This year, we must give a special acknowledgement to the countless essential workers who have helped us get through this global pandemic. Our local medical professionals, food handlers, educators, public transit and utility employees, and other individuals that have kept our community together in this turbulent and unpredictable time we find ourselves in. Without these people, we at NJSO would not be able to bring music to the people that need it. So we'd like to give endless thanks to those who have not only kept our neighbors, friends, and family safe, but have also given us the chance to make art and share it far and wide. We hope after this evening's program, you feel moved to help support our youth orchestras in whatever way you can. Using the link below or in the chat, please feel free to donate. Also below is the link to our online auction, which closes at 9 p.m. tonight. So be sure to get your bids in now. We look forward to seeing you all back in your concert seats very soon. Until then, good night and thank you for your support.